Welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio. Also, Spotify, Deezer, Apple. Uh, we just got on Castbox, Radio.com, Radio Public. Tune in wherever you listen to us. It's the Dark Mark Show. I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian. Thank you for listening. It's a special show. Yeah, it's a very special show. Okay, I'm flipping, I'm flipping the camera around. You hate this. I hate this part. That's uh, my co-host, everybody's favorite vegan heavy metal DJ, Hannah Bach. Hi, hey guys. Yeah. <laughs> Very special show because a couple a couple reasons. First off, we know what a Freddy Krueger Nightmare on Elm Street fan you are. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. You've seen the Dream Warriors and Dream Master once or twice? My favorites, yeah, more than once or twice. Yeah, those are probably yeah, the best. And, and that's partly because of this guy right here. That's uh, my new friend, which I, I met right about a month ago, and I keep doing shows at this bar, and I love ca- hanging out with this guy. Turned out to be a really cool guy. Rodney Eastman. Hey, thank you so much, Mark. Same to you, buddy. Right. And, and uh, also uh, here, uh, you know, we've had AVN nominees. Mm-hmm. And you are a Saturn Award nominee. I don't want to just Am I really? That. You I, were you were for, for some movie. I'll, well, I'll look it up. <laughs> it was a movie you did a long time ago, but... Uh, um, <laughs> we've had ABN Award nominees. We've had Grammy nominees. We have. We've never had an Academy Award nominee. Until tonight. Until tonight. <laughs> there he is. He's hiding from the camera. That's uh, John Hawks. Who I, How are you doing, folks? Yes. I also met much. about a month ago. So heard, so heard these two sing in the Rodney and John band, and we're going to hear, hear some some songs tonight. Turned out to be a, a super nice guy, mm. John, nice as, as 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 you might expect by seeing his, he didn't sing his movies, except for, you know, maybe the, what was that, the... Uh, Mary May, where you play a cult leader. It's easy for you to say. A Martha Marcy May Marlene. <laughs> Which I haven't seen, but now I want to see it, because yeah. that's like... You're Great what, movie. That's what I hear. Um, and you're like, you know, like, uh, you kind of got the Morgan Freeman vibe. You always play kind of, even if they're kind of rough around the edges, nice guys. Well, I should clear something up about the Academy Award nomination. It turns out it's a clerical mix-up. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. it was not. I yeah. saw it. I saw it. Actually, it. yeah, it was in the news. It was very. It was buried. In it, the was a, it, was a, it was a really, yeah... <laughs> You, so you actually won, and Christian Bale's got to give it back, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. The nomination itself. No, no. It was a that was a great experience. Winter's Bone was a was a, a dream to right. be part of. So, and we're, we're going to talk about that. Actually, thanks for uh, mentioning that because uh, I got to talk about our sponsors really quick. Uh, Audible. Uh, Audible is one of our sponsors. If you go to audibletrial.com dot com forward slash dms, you get one book, any book you want, two Audible originals, and a thirty day trial to Audible. Winter's Bone, the book, is one of the audiobooks you can get. It's fantastic. Also, your co-star Miranda July has two books on Audible. Uh, she, yeah, her short story collection, which I've read, is great. Mm. Apparently, she came out with a novel, mm-hmm. so I might uh, add that to my Audible collection. Also, you used to just get a book at the 30-day trial. Now you get two Audible originals. It's amazing. And the Audible originals are actually really cool. They have one with Kate McKinnon from Saturday Night Live. You guys like yeah. Kate McKinnon? Uh, sure. I think she's. Sure. I think she's great. I think she's kidding me. Yeah. I think she's the best. Uh, the best. Uh, Performing they've had since Eddie Murphy. I think she's great. She has a whole fairy tale she wrote with her sister. They performed it. It's on Audible. That's an original. You can get that free and Winner's Bone or whatever you want. Or Alien 3. <laughs> Not a great movie. But William Gibson, the cyberpunk writer, wrote a script wow. uh-huh. that wasn't used. So they got Michael Bean, Lance Henriksen, and the cast to act it out. That's fantastic. Nice. That's an Audible original. You can get oh, that free. So a great writer. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're like, well, what happened there? That that might have been the, the movie that you've been waiting for. You can listen to it in your car. Audible doc. Audible trial. I, I always mess it up. AudibleTrial.com <laughs> forward slash DMS. Well, you know, I, you know, having a great writer uh, write a a, a screenplay. At right. the, the problem with the screenplay was it was probably too good. Right was, was probably the <laughs> well. Problem. Oh, Frank Darabont. Frank Darabont wrote Nightmare on Elm Street three. I've got sure a writer. Yeah, mm-hmm. terrific. And you had like zero lines. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> am I wrong? Uh, no, you are not wrong. But I had I had the most important line. Yes, in the movie <laughs> Shattered at, Glass. at the end. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, we're gonna play for you probably later tonight. And. Uh, and, you and gotta play you, Dream Warriors. You will no, 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 no. <laughs> like the hockey. But no, no. But I'm gonna sing for you, and my voice can sometimes still shatter glass. I've you know, heard, I've right. heard both yes. of you yes. saying. Yeah. Heard, I was listening to your old band on Spotify uh, when I was driving down here. So I, yeah. I have to say, I feel like a lot of times the parts of movies that I really remember aren't when people are talking. 
Anyway, that, oh, yeah. the, the images seared in my mind are often uh, a character driving or uh, sure. shaping yeah. or um, just sitting in a, in a reflective moment. So, yeah, yeah, I think words are overrated. Well, Should we go home? No. Or, 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 un, <laughs> or unzipping the uh, dress of a fantastically sexy nurse. Or uh, oh, you or the waterbed. I got to see this. Right. Yeah. 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 You've never seen Nightmare on Elm Street before? Not, no, oh. I've not seen... What a friend. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't seen Casablanca and Humphrey Bogart. Right. Never forgave me for that. So, but it, yeah. I, I know for sure Rodney sang Me, You, and Everyone We Know because I put the uh, Great the, uh, the colon got, and the whole thing. And he well, he's got the sticker on his guitar. Yeah. That was that was a, a final yeah. Back and forth forever. Final homage. Back and forth forever. I, it, see, it's it, it's already going crazy. Uh, Hannah, before we go, before we start actually talking, because yeah. everybody's talking already. <laughs> the Sorry. show hasn't really begun. Sorry. Tell right? us about our other sponsor, because they might want to know about it. <laughs> Doomy's Home Cooking. Um, they have a Next Mex, the best, voted n- number one nachos in Los Angeles last well, year. The and only one vegan. without meat. They're all vegan. And they're all vegan. They also have... Um, oh. Where you can, another shop where you can get burgers and yeah. you can get a vegan Big Mac, a shrimp pole boy, which is one of Mark's favorites. Twelve fifty three Vine Street. Yeah, and now they're having um, root beer floats for a uh, summer. Wait, they have vegan root beer floats. They do, wow. yeah. Yeah, mm. it, it, you know where the M bar used to be on Fountain and Vine, twelve fifty three Vine Street. That's a block from my house. Go to Doomy's Home Cooking. Tell them I said hi. They're open to three a.m. Open to three a.m. Okay. So if you're wow. at the bars, which I tend to be. <laughs> then uh, just don't go to Denny's. Don't go to uh, IHOP. Get some, get some vegan junk food. Get and some. Yes, it's enough to take home, and it's gonna make you happy. I mean, you can get even the what, vegan, the vegan um, chili cheese chili fries. Cheese fries, animal style. Yeah, animal style yeah. without the animal. They have the, the best the jalapeno poppers. What's the name of this joint? Doomies. Home, home cooking. Doomies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's like, right. Like Doom. Like Harbinger of Doom. D O O M I E S. I know exactly where it is. It's yeah. right next door to uh, another business, Creamy. which I yeah. won't name because they're not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> and right. and I got. I I just have to say the the uh, the only uh, bar I really go to, other than uh, Five Star Bar where we have the comedy show, right? Is uh, it is the bar at our apartment. Uh, we have a apartment bar, nice. which, I, which and, I've never been invited to. But well, uh, uh, well, one day. Yeah. Yeah. Play your cards right, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> you have a waterbed. I, not yet, but if you're coming over, we might get one. Oh, if it's the same waterbed from Nightmare yeah. Four. I'll, I'm there. And I also got to say, uh, I am. I love you, and please don't hate me. I'm, I'm a staunch uh, meat eater, and uh, the closest I ever really get to vegan cuisine is uh, a few years ago. I. Uh, Worked a, a, as a delivery driver for uh, Flore on uh, mm-hmm. down on Sunset and Silver Lake. So. Mm. No, but this place is not like the other vegan restaurants. I mean, chicken Parmesan, pulled pork. It's, it's fantastic. They got one in Hollywood. They got one in Culver City. One in Toronto, Canada. Trust me, if I if I slid you some doomies right now, you would have no idea it was vegan. I um, gotta try it out. Yeah, my, I'm gonna try it out. All my meat eater friends at the bar, they're like, "It's closing time. You want to go to Doomies?" Uh, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. So, they have great carrot cake. You can nice. take that home. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want, you know, uh, you know, carnivorous carrot cake. <laughs> carrot cake would be tar- <laughs> no, no. Now, first, I, <laughs> I like my carrot cake topped with hamburger, personally, right. but yeah, that's it, just me. It, it's it, huge it. carrot. It's it's a really big piece of carrot cake. They got deep fried Oreos, all this stuff. Anyway, but, but anyway, I want to get. I've got the camera on John, so. Mm. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be like Spielberg and all the other great directors that have directed you now. <laughs> um, now, here's the thing. Now, first off, I I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you. Because every interview I've ever seen that you've given, you say you hate interviews. So mm-hmm. I appreciate you coming here and being interviewed by me. We'll try to make it as painless as possible. Right. And I don't say every interview, yeah. and I'm aware that uh, I chose to be here. It's just, you know, maybe this is fun. No, this is going to be fun. But, this but, is going to be fun, yeah. Certain, certain other interviews aren't so fun, I guess, and that's that's okay, too. But the reason the reason you give is not is do you want to maintain your anonymity? Yeah, yeah. Sort of. You don't want to. I mean, even though your your star has risen, especially in the last ten, uh, five, seven years, mm-hmm. you still you can walk around town. Nobody, nobody much bothers me. I appreciate that you've done the um, uh, the, the fuzzing of my face for all of this. The <laughs> kind of taking out and 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 also uh, covered my voice. So I saw yeah, yeah, that's more yeah. like this. <laughs> I'm an actress who. Uh, you may not know. <laughs> but you must have people. This is one. This is what I'm getting at. You must have people that like stare at you. Like I, 
I know that guy. Oh, well, I get recognized, I guess, yeah. A fair amount, and then other people, you know, they like, they're deal like, like this. Past, they're like, look oh, at you, yeah, look at the yeah. phone, look at you, look at the phone. Look right. At the phone. <laughs> yeah, the phone changed everything, uh, so you can just say your name now, and people can, can look it up. Instead Except for you, because... following you around and saying, weren't you in right. Godfather 5? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, wasn't in that one, but let's keep trying. Yeah. But as far as I, as far as I know, see, let me uh, correct me if it's changed. You don't have a smartphone. You don't have a computer. You don't have email. I have a computer. Okay. Uh, I have uh, no smartphone. I have uh, running water and electricity. Got, <laughs> nice. Uh, indoor plumbing. That's new. That's good. That's oh, new. Oh, that's brand good, new. Good. Just brought that in, and I've got a vehicle, which is good. Uh, runs on gasoline and battery. Well, speaking they call of it a hybrid. <laughs> uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, but no, you, you, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely stuck in the 20th century, I would say, somewhat. <laughs> I'm, I'm living in, in this world as well. But uh, it's nice back there. Hmm. That, that actually brings me to a question I was going to ask you later, but I'll ask it now. Because hmm. you were in Lincoln with Daniel Day Lewis. Indeed, yeah. And was he really like, you got to call me President Lincoln? Yeah, yeah. That, that, I'd heard that uh, weeks in advance, and I thought it was great. I'm such a huge fan of Like, did his. he use an outhouse? Did he, like, uh, you know, did... I was told, and I don't want to talk out of school, I don't know for sure, I was told that he had his heating shut off in his house, and in, in we were shooting in the winter in Richmond, Virginia, that's cold, I was told that he didn't uh, sleep much, Lincoln didn't, I was told that he got up at four or five and chopped wood, rode around on a horse, Wow! didn't seem weird to me at all, I have to say, Mark, it was more... Yeah, I didn't meet Daniel Day-Lewis uh, right. uh, during the shoot, you know, but I got to meet Abraham Lincoln, and uh, being a huge fan of Abraham Lincoln since I was a child, it was thrilling to be near him in that way, and you could just talk to him as though he was the president. Now, David Strathairn, wonderful actor who played uh, Mr. Seward, when I had dinner with him one night, I said, how's it going with Daniel? And he said, uh, well, last week, uh, you know, we hadn't been shooting very long, but last week, at one point, you know, an actor sometimes has really uncomfortable shoes, and if they're not going to be on camera, they might flip into some tennis shoes, right. which David had done. And um, uh, Daniel, while they were shooting the scene, kept kind of looking down, and all he said afterwards was, uh, interesting choice of footwear, Mr. Seward. <laughs> and, uh, and he went and changed shoes and put them back on for the, the rest of the thing. Uh, but no, there was nothing weird about him or really compulsive about it. It just felt normal, and it was really... I admire him so much. So it's a great any, performance. Whatever he wants yeah. to do to... Uh, to uh, to get into character is fine with me, man. Yeah. It was it was great. I only worked one day with him, but that's really why I did the movie, Mr. Spielberg notwithstanding. But uh, yeah. also amazing, of course. But yeah, the, the real thrill was to get to spend a day with Daniel Day Lewis. And originally, I was asleep through the scene, and uh, talked to Tony Kushner, the amazing writer of the script, great right. playwright, great writer. And um, so wait, they they hired you to sleep. Well, it wasn't like that in the script that I originally got, and I didn't talk much to him about it. I didn't uh, whinge or, or complain, but uh, but I got to be awake in the scene and actually exchange uh, lines with uh, with the president. So that was great. Right. Mm -hmm. Because uh, um, I was going to say, uh, that's not really your technique. However, I did, actually just this week in research, I saw your acclaimed Independent Spirit Award winning performance in the sessions. Mm. Mm -hmm. Which was, which is a great movie. You saw that, Rodney? Of course, it was great. And and, and you, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. Have you seen the sessions? I have not. So that's another one that I would recommend. Very okay. very good movie. I'll watch that this weekend. Yeah, I, I can't believe I hadn't seen it before with all, with all the nudity in it. But uh, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, but uh, John plays a, a, a poet who has polio. Mm. And I, 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 you know, I think I avoided this uh, because uh, it probably hit too home. Mm. Is that this is a guy who really has so many beautiful women around him, but he's physically challenged, and then you know obviously there he had polio now you put a ball under your back, yeah, uh you know there's a line in the script where helen Helen Hunt's character is dictating, speaking about having met with uh, my character Mark O'Brien, and she says the curvature of his spine may make intercourse impossible, right, wow. and so you can't really just. Uh, disregard that as an actor. I mean, yeah. these are great clues about how to how to play your characters. So I devised just a real hard piece of foam about the size of a soccer ball to lay under the side of of. Right. Playing, it's a real character, Mark O'Brien. Mark O'Brien passed yeah. away by now, but 
uh, was a poet and an amazing human being. wrote a, wrote a really interesting book called the how, "How I Became a Human Being." That's a really wonderful one. A lot of clues there as to how to portray him as well. But he, right. uh, yeah. So that just made me lie in a very uh, awkward, uncomfortable position uh, in order to uh, approximate, uh, you know, what 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 he was. Now, did I read yeah. correctly that your organs were going out of alignment? Wow, you're a, quite a, re- a researcher. Um, Something yeah. you both have in common. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I had a chiropractor that I'd been seeing throughout, and he was uh, telling me, yeah, that my organs were, were shifting in my body yeah. a little bit, but um, I'm still here. I feel so fine. Uh, has, 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 occasional has, ache or pain, but, you know. I mean, you know, are the organs back to where they're supposed to be? I don't know. I don't really, you know. <laughs> You know, back in the last century, we didn't go to the doctor as much, yeah. so yeah. I had, you had I Helen Hunt on top of you, is that all? Uh, yeah, that didn't, that you're okay with that? <laughs> with what? Helen Hunt was on top of you. you, that, you that. that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I toughed through it. Yeah, well, but, but here's the thing, Dom, uh, and uh, I want an honest answer. Hmm. You were nominated for, you won the Independent Spirit Award, mm-hmm. nominated for the Golden Globe, mm-hmm. Screen Actors Guild, mm-hmm. Critics' Choice, mm-hmm. uh, uh, every award, mm-hmm. and you did not get an Oscar nomination. It's true. Were you disappointed? Mm-hmm. Here's the funny thing. After Winter's Bone, uh, you know, my, it's going to sound really ungrateful, but my goal as an actor was never to, you know, to try to win awards or whatever, but you get sucked into that, and your life changes, and so... Uh, at the first Academy Awards, uh, I said to my girlfriend, longtime girlfriend at the time, when it finished, uh, I hope that never happens again. And, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'd be better with it now, but I was pretty unprepared for for the amount of attention, I guess, that you, you get in that instance. But even after 30 years TMZ of... TMZ and things like that. Mm, well, no, I... Of acting. Yeah. It's validation that... No, believe me, I, I, the greatest thing was to be in that room with a bunch of extraordinary artists, and there were mm-hmm. people I admired that I got to meet that night. That was all really great. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, at the time, I just I just felt like that, that's plenty. I just kind of want to live my life, and... Um, and I kind of got what I asked for. I so guess. every yeah. critic's like he's he's a, he's a lock. Yeah, that was a and hard it, part as well. Was from January when it, the uh, the sessions aired at Sundance to have every interview begin with, "Are you preparing your speech? Are you ready to go?" <laughs> yeah. For, for a year, literally. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then and then you're like, well, thank goodness that didn't happen. Mm, no, I was bummed, to be yeah. honest. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's funny how we change. But, yeah, I was bummed. Okay, I, I, that's an honest answer. But mm. you did win the Independent Spirit Award. That, yeah. that ain't, that's an empty shot. No. That's, that was two of those now. Mm, yeah, two, yes. Yeah, because you won one for Winter's Bone. And did. we're, we're going to... We're gonna get back to we're gonna get back to that and uh, my personal favorite movie of yours, me, you, and everyone we know and other oh, yeah. things. But I, um, before we get to Rodney, because Rodney's uh, being very patient, uh, you, when people get uh, recognize you on the street, I'm assuming it's mostly for Deadwood and uh, Eastbound and Down, correct? Well, it depends on the person, but Deadwood has been uh, 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 something people have uh, really not let go for yeah. 13 years until until now, oh. I guess. But uh, yeah, that was that was people love that show. So wherever I was, tra- oh, even traveling. now, I've seen some reactions to the movie. Like, come on, yeah. we got let's do this one over. Yeah, like, yeah. I'd like to keep going, but uh, I don't think that'll happen. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and we'll get to Rodney in a second, but Deadwood talk. Deadwood fans don't want to hear this. <laughs> how did the, how did I mean the the uh, you know the show ended I think prematurely I think a lot of people wanted it to go great cast yeah it was kind of canceled after the third season unexpectedly so it didn't have an ending yeah. right so and and they kept they kept saying for ten years mm. the movie's coming the movie's coming movie. how did that come mm. about um man uh, <laughs> I don't know incantations there might have been some right. some spells cast I don't know uh, what happened right. I think uh, I think. You know, a script finally really came that HBO would would get behind. Uh, David Milch is a, a amazing writer, probably right. one of the best writers I've ever encountered. But he doesn't he doesn't work fast, and so yeah. you know, it took a while for him to get something that he liked and they liked. I think, right. and uh, and then we were able to start clearing schedules and go forward. And that somehow, is, yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah, four twenty five actors came back, and a lot of the crew was great. Right. So I think uh, the gripe that I and I haven't seen the movie yet, but uh, the gripe I hear is that uh, Swearingen doesn't swear enough. Oh wow, he probably <laughs> swears well, a fair amount. Yeah, I don't know. and I don't know how much you swore in the movie, but uh, I never really swore a lot on the show. I kind of yeah. played more of a of a he's kinder shot, man, kind of but I swear a bit. You know, he's yeah. he's, he's tough enough. Right, yeah. right. The movie's incredible. I yeah. guess yeah, I gotta check yeah. it out. I I yeah. definitely look really look forward. To it. 
Yeah, just having it amazing because I've been going to the five star bar and doing comedy yeah. and hanging out with you guys mm-hmm. and opening for you guys. This is Rodney. I got Rodney right here. Hey, Mark. Now, Rodney, <laughs> Rodney, the uh, you've been an, uh, you're uh, I don't want to discount you are you've been a working actor this whole time as well, and you keep coming up with I mean, you're like a horror legend. Not only are you Nightmare on Elm Street three, you're a dream warrior. I am a dream warrior. When Dokken was streaming throughout the Dream Warriors, this is who he was talking about. Mm-hmm. You were you were in the Dream Master very you know for you know, a little bit, uh, long enough. And you know you've been, <laughs> you've been on Melrose Place, you've been on Charles in Charge, you've been on uh, all sorts of things. I spit on your grave, the remake. Which Hannah is very uh, yeah, loves that one. I mean your character, like I, I mean I've watched that several times like, before I knew it was actually you, you and the two two together. <laughs> you have I two actually things. threw <laughs> some things at the TV. I was cussing at your character. I mean you you did your job. I mean you, you brought out anger in me when I was just watching the film. You did. You're fantastic. I gotta see, I gotta see that again. Oh yeah. I mean just. Have you, you seen anything? I, I, I spit on your grave, John. I have not. No, no. see see nightmare first. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> so uh, I spit on your grave. Um, the remake. The yeah. remake. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> when uh, I, I actually uh, got offered that uh, movie, um, didn't have to audition, and and uh, and it was the title of the script I got was Day of the Women, Day of the Woman, which was the original title for the original I spit on your for grave. the original I spit on your grave, mm. um, and and it's it's really interesting the the subject matter of that movie, mm-hmm. uh, even. Uh, today it's held up uh, by uh, like, uh, women's rights mm-hmm. uh, proponents as like a real sort of uh, like um, a real example of of, uh, yeah. of early uh, power of women, yeah. you know, taking control. And so uh, I got sent the script. I read it. I thought it was. Uh, really dark but really incredible mm-hmm. and uh my neighbor I went next door and I was saying oh I think I'm going to do this movie it's called Day of the Women and I described the uh the plot and he was like isn't that I spit on your grave I was like no this it's <laughs> <laughs> it's called Day of the Woman yeah and uh I went and met with the director and I still didn't know mm-hmm. and found out that it was a remake and uh apparently they kept the page with the spitting away from you so uh, I think it was to sort of uh keep the remake right, nature of it know, under yeah. the radar right mm-hmm. uh Anchor Bay made the movie yeah and um that you know you could say uh oh you're a uh, horror legend yeah. I've only done three horror movies ever in my life. Well, those are three big ones. Nightmare 3, Nightmare 4, and uh, the remake of I Spit on Your Grave. Those are three of Hannah's favorites. <clears throat> and that movie uh, was one of the greatest acting experiences I've ever had in my life. I was going to ask you, what does it take to prepare to play a role like that? Well, it's so dark. Mm-hmm. It's so out there. And Now, now you, you play a rapist, am I correct? Well... I mean, you never see me rape, but right. yes, yeah, I, I play a rapist. I play okay. a redneck. All right, I'm kind of like a ringleader. Okay. No, 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 a bit. no. I'm a follower in that movie. Mm-hmm. I, I think. Um, but that was, uh, yeah, it was really interesting. It was, it was the kind of script where, especially our director, really. Uh, wanted to make it real and the movie never got much traction in the theaters because everybody at the time was saying you can't remake this movie uh, today well, there was a lot of remakes at the time too and people were getting burned out of them too but it was also the subject matter they were right. saying you, this movie was so uh, edgy right. in the original that there's no way you could make it today well let me ask you since, since you know we've got uh Three great actors uh, sitting here, me, you, and John, uh, <laughs> and everyone we know. Yeah, exactly. How, how, how do you, I mean? Uh, are there time? I mean, you're a, you're a decent human being, and you're you're called upon to do. Don't be so quick, Mark. All right. Well, I don't know you that well, but you're a decent human being. Uh, you, you, 
to do these things, I mean, does the director have to push you forward or does he have to pull you back and say, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second. Mm. Like, how far into it did you get? I think everybody... How method did you get? Uh, everybody knew at the beginning of shooting, uh, our director was uh, very clear that he wanted to make it real. Right. Uh, I think it's an amazing movie. I think it's such a well-directed, such a tight, great movie. It's one of the few... I hate remakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the few remakes that might be, no disrespect, better than the original. I agree. And and it was the subject matter that it dealt with, right? which is, if for those uh, fans who don't know yes. of your show... It's about uh, a, basically a gang rape yeah. and revenge on the men who commit that act. Right. There was no way that you could fake that. There was no way that you could just go halfway with that kind of performance. Right. To make it real, to make it believable, to make it visceral right. and frightening and disgusting. Now when you go in You had to really you yeah. had to really go there. Yeah. And we we shot that in Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah. And we were at like a, a day's end in the middle of nowhere. I've been to Shreveport. Right. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The yeah. only good thing about Shreveport is that you could drive through at yeah. the liquor store and buy a daiquiri to go. No, I've done that. Yeah, you used to live in New Orleans. That's, that's what's great about it. Not on Sundays. Yeah, not yeah. but not on Sundays. Monday, Saturdays. You can't get Chick-fil-A. You can't get a drive through get daiquiri <laughs> on Sundays. But did you feel gross when you came home? Did you feel like icky? I didn't. No, okay. No, because if we were in such an isolated location to begin with. Right. There were uh, five of us all engaged in the same act of storytelling. Right. You could not fake it. You had to go there 100%. I think kind of like John was talking about. I won't compare the movies, right. but much like Daniel Day-Lewis, right. he really had to go there. He had really had to go for it. Right. Much like John with the ball in his back. Sure. You couldn't go halfway with that. Absolutely. And it was super traumatic. Yeah. And we pretty much shot the film in sequence. Yeah, that's... So it was super traumatic. It was super traumatic well, you'd subject have to, you'd matter. You have to kind of do that, though. But but yeah. that ended up bonding all the all of the actors right. together. Right. It made it one of the... It's so... I'm getting chills. It's one of the weirdest right. things to Let's say. Stay that, away from Hannah. That one of the... One what? of the hardest subject matters... Hannah Morgan, I got you guys. <laughs> one of the hardest subject matters to deal with right. ended up bonding the group of actors that were all there doing it together right. mm -hmm. in a way that I don't think I've ever experienced in anything I've ever worked on. Right. And, and I and I got to say, I'm really surprised that that movie is... Even, even a nightmare, because you... Even a dream... I was 18. Yeah, you're a kid. You right. Know, I mean, I was a kid. Yeah. And, 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 and we're going to talk about that. And uh, actually... Um, a lot of people don't know that Daniel Day-Lewis was the uh, the original choice for High Spit on Your Grave, but you got the role instead. So, <laughs> I was going to say, now, now, John, now, your real name is not Hawks. It's not, no. It's, I and I, I, I had it on the tip of my tongue. I've been looking at it all week. It's, uh, I don't know what it is. Hawks. It's not Hawks. It, it Perkins. Hawks. Perkins. Perkins. Oh, God. Mm. I always do this. I flooded myself with so much John Hawks, Rodney Eatman information this week. Uh, now, how did you get Hawks? Um, I joined, when I became a professional actor in 1986, I joined Actors' Equity Union in San Francisco where I'd been flown to do a play. Right. Very exciting. Everything was great. We were rehearsing for a couple of weeks, and the publicist for the play came in and said, uh, I just spoke with the Actors' Equity representative. That's the union for live right. stage actors. And he told me that there's already a John Perkins. And I said, oh, that's that's interesting. And she said, well, it's not good because there can't be two John Travoltas, could there? Or right. I said, no, I guess there couldn't be. So she said, uh, I said, well, what's that other guy going to do? And she said, no, <laughs> you're, you're going to have to uh, change your name and we're printing the programs in a couple hours, so get back to me. So uh, I called my Aunt Aggie in uh, San Mateo, rest in peace, Aunt Agnes, and she listed a bunch of family names, and this one turned out to be a married-in one, but I like the sound of it, yeah. and uh, eventually through um, difficulties with the IRS and the uh, Social Security Administration being confused as to why I, had, why I was being paid under two different names often and, and one Social Security number, I made things easier in 1990 and changed my name permanently to John Hawks. Okay. 
My mother at the time said she was fine with that, but if I ever won an Academy Award, she'd change her name to Hawks, uh, she said. <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, she never had to, so... Uh, yeah. Damn that and Christian so far, Bale. So anyway, far. Uh, I keep, I'm i sorry I keep saying that. But oh, that doesn't <laughs> matter. He's a fine actor. Yeah. No, no, it was, I mean, it's... Uh, but uh, your performance of Winner's Bone... Now, now, when I first... And, and this is when I went up to you I, and fanboyed out and embarrassed myself. Mm-hmm. When I saw you guys perform at the Five Star Bar, and you guys are great, and we're going to hear some music later. Uh, mm-hmm. Because one of my favorite was probably... And I loaned... Uh, Handed a DVD. I wanted her to watch it with Grandpa. Watch it tonight, yeah. See what you think. One of my favorite movies, probably top 20 favorite movies of all time, Me, You, and Everyone We Know. Hmm. And that's when I first noticed you. Now, I've seen you in Perfect Storm, uh, From Dust Till Dawn. A lot of people recognize mm-hmm. you from that. Just all, all, all sorts of, of movies. This was kind of uh, a lead. Mm-hmm. And it's such an. It's what, what I really take from the movie, and I, I, I watched it a couple weeks ago. It's a bunch of very eccentric people that are all relatable. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a good way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's so hard to describe the movie. It is. <laughs> That's the thing. You're like, just see it. Trust me. You'll love it. Yeah. Uh, that movie has got a lot of, I think, play internationally as well. I was in Ireland two summers ago in a, uh, in a guitar store, and one of the employees, a uh, very kind man, but... but took about five minutes uh, on the edge of tears telling me how that movie had saved his life mm-hmm. and so uh, that he'd watched it over and over through a difficult part in his in his life and you know stuff like that that's that's really cool um, and a movie that can can travel you know it's a rare thing it, it can it, kind of play in a lot of different uh, cultures somehow even though it's such an oddball it's, a, it's an odd movie uh, Miranda July mm-hmm. uh, starred in it wrote, wrote directed. it directed it mm-hmm. and a uh, uh, genius yeah, it was her first film. She'd done a lot of performance art in the Pacific Northwest, and she'd, uh, I think, went to, I think her start with this was writing a script, submitting it to the Sundance Film Lab, and being chosen. And I wasn't part of that film lab. I've been there for other projects over the years, but right. uh, that's kind of where that one got, got, got the wheels turning. And how'd they get you? Um, uh, she was interested because uh, Michelle Satter, who runs the Sundance Lab, uh, uh, really thought I'd be great for the part, and Miranda. I don't know if she was uh, convinced by any means, but uh, but I went and read for her, uh, and Gina Kwan, the producer, and it was a uh, super emotional kind of session. Um, that one kind of went back and forth. How so? How so? Oh, it's an emotional work, an emotional yeah. scene, and I I loved the script so much right. when I read it. I really, really, really wanted the role badly. Yeah. And I uh, was trying to have to kind of hold myself together through through the whole process to not be uh, desperate or weird over the whole thing. <laughs> but uh, you know, the character is a little desperate and weird, yeah. Richard Richard Swerzy. Yeah. But um, the as are every as every character in the movie. It's pretty much as is everybody in real life. That's true. And and so that one was uh, I I ended up uh, inconsolable when it looked like I wouldn't be able to be in the film because I was still working on Deadwood and right. and I'd gotten another small movie that I I couldn't uh, didn't have a big part but I said I would do it and so it was hard to walk away from but somehow it ended up all working out and uh, I'm really glad it did. And uh, yeah. it, it, I I remember going to see it with my girlfriend in the theater mm-hmm. and we were we heard all the you know it's a critically acclaimed we we're like yeah let's check it out mm-hmm. about 15 minutes we both looked at each other like. This is so much better than we thought. Oh, good, good. I don't know that, you know, no one loves or hates, no piece of art or human being is loved or hated by everyone, but, uh, but, and, and that one's probably not for everybody, but right. for those who it's for, I think it's, it, it's really great. It's yeah. really amazing for, for someone who can, who can take that trip. And she worked at the Gord House and we took the walk. Mm-hmm. It, was a whole, it, was a, it was a whole thing anyway yeah. but it's but that I think I mean that's when I first noticed you and I was like mm-hmm. oh he's American Gangster he's in that he's in Miami Vice he's in mm-hmm. like every like every movie like you pop up in oh yeah well I was Donnie Darko sequel you're playing the, 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 the motel <laughs> manager I'm like what the <laughs> what, I what, young, I needed why the, the hell would he take know. this <laughs> Well, that actually, was that was there was yeah, that friends involved, yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah, I don't know how the film came out because I never saw it, but I, I, I uh, it's actually not that bad. It's good, it's, it's not as good, good as Dying Darko, obviously, right, but it's right. not bad. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a remake, and I kind of feel how Rodney does about remakes generally. So, 
Or well, it's kind of a sequel. It was a prequel, it, wasn't it? Or it was a sequel? It was a, it was a loose sequel. The, I the little the girl and Donnie Darko. I haven't seen the original either. Grew so. up and it, got you. There's got a couple you. twists and turns. It's it's not great, but it's not bad. Cool. You're I right. mean, you know, it's uh, just go see it for the motel manager. But I'll check it out. <laughs> What's it called again? It's S. <laughs> Darko. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you did a lot of TV shows, I noticed, too, and you started in one that was a staple in my growing up because I'm from Alaska, which was Northern Exposure. Oh, do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that Do was you remember that when he was in there? That's really No, cool. but I, w- I was trying to go back to find it, yeah. and yeah, I it couldn't was a find cool it. Yeah, character. You yeah. know, I'd been, uh, that was a great Hollywood lesson in that uh, I, I wasn't watching a ton of television, but I, I remember I didn't have cable, and uh, I was living in Hollywood in 1990, and I'm had heard that show was good and I didn't always trust when large groups of people liked something but I I, I I watched it and and I was nearly banging the side of my TV going this is free I don't know if the, this is amazing I mean mm-hmm. at the time right there weren't there weren't so many really smart shows like that yeah. going on it was funny and and uh, and heartwarming and and, uh, and the stories and the characters were, were well drawn and amazing mm-hmm. so I got to I went and auditioned for a hotel clerk and didn't get the part and I was really bummed and this is how life works. I think it was a month later they called me back in to read for kind of, you know, one of the two real leads of the episode, playing mm-hmm. a health inspector, and uh, and got that part. And if I'd gotten the, you know, desk clerk part, I wouldn't, that I was right. so pissed off about, I never would have gotten the really cool part. And then so you finally in that star, you played a hotel desk clerk, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got to live my dream. Was, was that uh, the first, uh, like, major TV show that you were on? Um, let me see. Uh, it certainly was the first time I got to play a character that felt like a human being to right. me. I, I'd done um, some sitcoms that are probably mostly forgotten. Uh, but, yeah, that was the first time I really got to play someone who felt like a, a live awesome. person that I could dig my, sink my teeth into. Yeah. And really, really, And the writing's so good, so mm-hmm. that was helpful. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, cause, yeah, she lived on her disposal. You just, yeah. you just yeah. I, I, I was wondering where you were from mm-hmm. as I listened to you speak. So you're from, yeah. from yeah. Alaska. That's awesome. Little, right. little Island, Ketchikan. Oh, yes. cool. so everybody up there watched that. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And you know what else everybody watched? The Dream Warriors. That's true. <laughs> Those guys. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, drum roll. No, this was this was your. Uh, now I was going to ask you: Were you in Tiger Beat and like uh, Teen Magazines? I was. That's I thought you might have been. Yeah, I was. How was that? Um, I don't know. I mean, that that all it was, happened when I was, you know, b- barely out of high school. And I mean, how was anyone at eighteen and nineteen years old? I've, I wouldn't yeah. mind being in Tiger Beat. Come on. <laughs> Sure, I, <laughs> sure. I wouldn't mind being in Tiger Beat now, although that would be a little creepy. But well, well, Tiger Beat's creepy. And by the way, our young fans that don't know what we're talking about, throwback they, Tiger mm-hmm. Beat. They used to have 16. magazines where Isn't they had still young out, boys. Honestly, one of those. I, magazines are. I don't know if they're going out of business, but basically, it was a magazine for teenage girls and pedophiles, which had, uh, which had, uh, which is a, a never mind. Go on. Which had, uh, it had uh, pictures of the cute, hot young men at the time and uh you were one of them i was and uh that i actually only have one saved ever uh i think it was the uh 90, 90, 1991 episode uh, uh issue yeah I can't remember the the month of mm-hmm. ym magazine and i was listed as one of the 50 most elig- eligible bachelors ah in hollywood in the world in the world oh, wow. yeah the only person who had a, a bigger picture than me was JFK Jr. So, wow. so that was and look that what was, happened to him. That was pretty good for the ego, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, you but, yeah. and JFK Jr. But yeah, I, you know, I, not to get too s- philosophical about it, but you know, when all that was happening, I was eighteen, nineteen, you know, twenty years old. So you must have been going wild. I wasn't because it it wasn't the same way that society is now. There was no uh, TMZ culture. Even well, that's uh, better. D- well, d- now were you you were in Hollywood? I lived in, in the Hollywood 80s, in the eighties. N- you not. Put- I grew up in East LA. In the eighties, I was I was living in East LA. Okay. Uh, I had no connection to the business. Uh, I I just got lucky. I did. How did you start acting? Um. Well, uh, I I always wanted to be an actor. Right. But then once I was like a sophomore in high school, I thought that's an impossible. Uh, goal i had no connection to the industry mm-hmm. but a friend of my mom's and don't worry about them just go ahead no it's i'm not i'm not worried about i'm not, not yeah. at all yeah 
I grew up in East L.A. I'm not worried at all. Exactly. It's, 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 we're bringing you back to East L.A. Right. It's like old home week. Yeah, all the Cholos are out there just going wild. <laughs> You'll hear some firecrackers in a second. So a friend, of my, a friend of my mom's was involved in the business in some sideways kind of way. Right. And his friend was the first AD on an ABC after school special called Have You Tried Talking to Patty? Right. Which, oddly enough, was starring Heather Langenkamp. Wow. Nancy from Nightmare. Right. And also Mark Patton, who was the male lead of Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Okay. Oh, okay. Which is... The, the homoerotic one. Which is widely considered the gay Nightmare on Elm Street. Right, right. It's homoerotic, yes. Right. And he actually has... A, uh, he made, He's just made a film called My Nightmare right. that's screening for Outfest at MoCA on July 21st. Oh, I might check so, it out. So, hey, I, let's go. I had always wanted to be an actor. I was working at a Arco gas station at the time. Okay. I was 18. Right. And uh, they needed extras uh, that could look like high school students. When I was 18 years old, I looked like I was 14. Maybe okay. 13. I, I, I was a late bloomer. Right. And so... Uh, they needed us for two See, weeks. See, now you look like you're 18, but <laughs> you're too kind. So uh, so they needed us for two weeks. Mm-hmm. So I just sat on set, and because I was young and cute, and because uh, I had a connection to the first day to eight, they would always push me to the front mm. of the crowd scenes. Okay. So I, I got to watch the actors every single day. And after, you know, when I wanted to be an actor ever since I was a little kid. Yeah. And then it seemed like an impossible dream. And then I, all of a sudden I was an actor. I was an extra on a set. Right. And I just watched the actors every day and I went, that's acting? I could do that. Right. Right? Yeah. And uh, then... That's what John said when he saw the Daniel Day-Lewis. He's like, very, that, 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 anybody well, can do that. And so, yeah, very soon after I got into an acting class and uh, six months later got an interview with an agent. And right. the first job I ever auditioned for... I got the part and got into the Screen Actors Guild. And that's Nightmare on Elm Street 3. No, no, no. That was Children of Times Square, directed by a great director, Curtis Hansen. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, a mini- directed L.A. Confidential, yeah. Eight, Eight Mile. Mile. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. His first big job, a miniseries right. on ABC. And uh, and then I didn't get a job for ten months after that. That, that kind of happens. And I thought, well, that's cool. I've been on TV. You know, yeah. I gave it a shot. Yeah. and. And then I uh, all of a sudden got a a part on a really bad uh, courtroom show called The Judge. Hmm, I don't remember that. Which one. was before actual People's Court or anything like that. Right. And that you know kind of reinforced my confidence. And the next week I got a call to audition for Nightmare Three. All right. Now now we're kind of talking about now. Yeah. Hannah, go go ahead. What were your Nightmare on Elm Street questions? Because I got a bunch. Um. Since the, you know you were just kind of like making it into the to movies, what was it like to get a call to do a film like that? Uh, incredible. Yeah. Because you know I uh, I'm gonna tell a big secret. I'm uh, 52 years old. Oh well, I will be next week. Yeah. 51. Well, happy no, birthday. I'm the first person who lies above their age. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you. you but read, so you read, I yeah, so I grew up in the 80s. <laughs> you know, I graduated in 1985. I was into. Iron Maiden and Metallica, and I was into heavy metal culture, and mm-hmm. and I saw not Dawkins so much. I, well, no, I was way into Dawkins. Oh, okay, yeah, I was super into Dawkins. Okay, uh, Judas Priest. I, sure. you know, oh. we don't have that much time. You know, no, I know, I know. <laughs> You'd be surprised how long. How long. So, uh, yeah, I saw Nightmare One in the theater. I saw. Uh, Texas Chainsaw at the drive-in. Right. I saw uh, the first Friday the Thirteenth, so I was into you know metal and horror culture and all mm-hmm. that. And uh, you know, I, if you look at my Instagram, Rodney Eastman, just that simple. At mm-hmm. Rodney Eastman, right? Uh, th- I have a picture posted on there uh, from when I was 16 years old, and my hair is probably about as I long saw as yours. That, yeah. Look at, so, that look at that smile! Yeah. Look at that smile! So <laughs> loves that long hair. So to get <laughs> so to get that audition, you know, and then to get the part was uh, incredible, you know, and um, and also I feel really blessed and really lucky uh, that R and P R and P R I P 
um, the, you know, the creator of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Wes Craven. Right. Uh, that he made Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one, uh, kind of stepped away, kind of, you know, sold the the project to a new line and uh, really wanted to save the franchise. Right. And came back to uh, be really hands-on involved with part three. He really and, was. Oh, yeah. He was on set every single day. Okay. I didn't know this. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because I know uh, he wrote a script, and Chuck Russell, the director, and Frank Darabont, the Academy Award winner, rewrote it. His was like Time Travel or something, and this, it was... The but, th yes, there were d big differences, Yeah. but the original idea of Dream Warriors right. and uh, kids that were disadvantaged, right. bullied, right. mentally ill... It was way ahead of its time in, in that. Mm -hmm. Right, that they would... And also, I feel like that's why Nightmare on Elm Street 3 is such a such a fan favorite. It's and, the best. It's the best one. so lasting, because every one of the kids in that movie, everybody who watches that movie, even if you're not a horror fan, there's somebody in that movie that you can relate to. Right. Definitely. And so just to be a fan of horror and to be on that set, and to uh, have a real piece in that movie, you know, have a real part of it, was super exciting. But, I mean, the cast is amazing. You got Patricia Arquette, who won an Academy yeah. Award, uh, and apparently you had a mad crush on her, uh, according to the documentary. Now, you want to clear this one up? The, I, I make it clearer? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was completely in love with her. I, it was uh, you went to Robert Englund, who plays Freddie himself, and said, "How do I get this girl?" I don't remember that. Okay. but but if but if it's online, it must be true. <laughs> it, it, it's it's in the documentary. Never sleep alone. Never sleep again. I'll never sleep again. I'm sorry. But, but, Mark, I think you're projecting. <laughs> well, I'm in, I'm in love with Patricia Arquette. I'm in love with Patricia Arquette. You know, the, and if she's the, never, the never sleep alone part. Yes. <laughs> but, but I, no, I always sleep alone. But Patricia Arquette, if you're listening. But you know who else? I mean, Jennifer Rubin. I met her last year. She's Incredible. still beautiful. Oh. Incredible. And also, uh, you know, she was such a, a you know, a, you know, Midwest, uh, you know, all-American girl. Uh, Heather Langenkamp. Uh, Beautiful, too. In that movie, you know, you look back in those movies, God, she's so gorgeous. But uh, what I wanted to say was, you were asking me about... Patricia Arquette. No, no. Yeah. Well, yes. Patricia Arquette, yes. But, you know, very simply, I did have a crush on her. She yeah. was, how could you not? Exactly. Patricia Arquette. So beautiful. And uh, and uh, so sweet and talented and kind. And this is and, her first movie. And her first movie. And my first my first movie, my first right. real movie. It was incredible. But what you were asking me earlier about uh, Tiger Beat, 16 Magazine. Right. And how, uh, weren't you so excited? And I told you there was no TMZ culture. There was no internet. There, nothing like that. So I, I got to tell you, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 was a top 10 grocer. Yeah. In, in the year it was released. Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Even bigger. Even bigger. Nightmare on Elm Street 4 was the highest grossing independent film of all time when it came out. Right. They got knocked off by Sex, Lies, and Videotape. Right. Mm. But there was no... There was pockets of celebrity culture. But, I mean, you but can't... not like celebrity culture like that. I didn't even know that I was in a top ten grossing movie. I Now, if an actor, right. if a 19-year-old actor mm -hmm. is a lead in a movie right. that's a top ten grosser of the year... Like the, Sp the Spider-Man guy. Right. He's got a publicist. He's got package deals. Right. He gets... It was a different time. Right. You know? No, I'm saying... You're going down. You're going to. You're going to clubs. You're going. No, I was not. He's talking about action, buddy. Action, buddy. He's talking about action. I'm saying you don't. You, you don't walk down the street and, the, and then the hot, beautiful women go, "Oh my God, it's Joey from Nightmare on Elm Street." 
No, when I made Nightmare on Elm Street 3, I was still living in, in East L.A. I had an amazing girlfriend oh, okay. well, named Adriana Juana Aguilar. Okay, good, good for her. <laughs> did you get, like, the fan mail that we would, like, write into? Yeah. Let's see. Did that actually go to you or did that go to somebody else? No, I would get fan mail. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I was lazy. I yeah. We had that little book and we'd write little, you know, messages. You, you, wrote, you wrote Rodney? And, no, uh, I didn't. No. Okay. <laughs> but but I, I have to say. I'm, I know I'm 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 always a long talker. Sorry. No, no it's a thoughtful answer. So. <clears throat> that that when it was happening, like at that time, horror movies were like the redheaded stepchild of the film industry. Right. They really were like one step above pornos. Sure. You know, in in some way, you know, just like much like now you'll see Sam Jackson mm-hmm. doing a credit card commercial. Mm-hmm. Back then, uh, like, there was a clear delineation. Right. Uh, you know, a, a Academy Award uh, nominated actors. Horror was way down on the line. Right. And nobody knew at that time. Everybody knew, oh, these movies are successful. People like them. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, how can you say this is an iconic franchise? Yeah. It was becoming that, but it wasn't. As reinforced by culture as it is now. Okay. So when you got when you got the script and you had like no lines, what did you think? Well, that's going to be really easy to memorize. <laughs> that's what I thought. And then you got the, the the script for four and you had like five lines. You Mother, must, you know. then I was like, you <laughs> bastards. <laughs> you wanted to be the, the first one, first. and they replaced Patricia Patricia Arquette with somebody else. I don't even. I, I'm. I'm. My lawyers advise me not to even discuss that. So <laughs> yeah, no, no offense to the uh, uh, probably the best name I've ever heard in my life for an actor Tuesday night. But uh, she's oh, not. I oh, Tuesday. But, yeah. but, oh, yeah. I remember her work with her years ago. Oh, okay, yeah. She, she was. She awesome. replaced Patricia Arquette in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I didn't realize. We'll yeah. Have to watch um, I'm. Re- I'm currently representing someone called Wednesday Morning. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's a, that's a, that's a good name too. But you know, uh, her so, daughter. But I can't, if I if I may finish. I'm, uh, oh please. That uh, now, but what? There was several years maybe even decades where I was embarrassed that Nightmare on Elm Street was the thing that I was the most known for. Really? I've got a, I've got almost 100 credits on my IMDb. Right. I've worked a bunch. And and as time has gone by... You're on Melrose Place. That was yeah. a great show. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I got slapped by Heather Locklear. Well, who, who <laughs> hasn't? Before she slapped her boyfriend. Right. Um... But what I eventually came to realize, I started doing conventions, right. and I saw the love for this movie. Right. I saw how people were coming. Literally, people have come up to talk to me at conventions. Right. Grandmother, daughter, right. grand grandson. There you go. It's generational. Right. And now I feel like, now I feel so proud of being in those movies. I mean, and you, you, and so lucky right. because they've become so iconic. Right. You know, everyone, you could go all over the world. You could go to Indonesia and you go, and people go, yeah. Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Like people know. How's it. that for a wet dream? Everybody knows it. Everybody knows well, it. Well, it's funny because when, when we were little, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have smartphones. So we had our imagination. Right. And after seeing you with the waterbed scene, yeah. my friend's parents had a waterbed. And so we were the waterbed inspectors to make sure no one was in there. There's like no, we demanded no, to no, go no, look. And <laughs> no naked women in the waterbed. But <laughs> yeah. uh, by the way, John, since you haven't seen these movies, I don't want to spoil it. But uh, yeah. Rodney's weakness, that Freddy, uh, uh, Freddy Krueger. Uh, uh, he uh, his weakness is horniness, and Freddy Krueger exploits that. And not yeah. much has changed. Uh, in yeah. Nightmare Three, a nurse strips, and oh yes, yeah, so this is what I want to get to. Strips, they start kissing. It turns out he's kissing Freddy. Mm-hmm. Freddy takes his tongue, sp- uh, uh, puts it on uh, four tongues, straps him to a bed. Now you're strapped to a bed, but they filmed it with you vertically. That's right. Why? Roy Wagner. Uh. Because the uh, Roy Wagner, the uh, director of photography, mm-hmm. uh, had a whole uh, vision for it. Um, you know, again, the, also no CGI right. back then. Right. And uh, just the, the. So what were the tongues made out of? Latex. Oh, okay. Right. So there was a whole 
uh, just the way the sequence was planned out, they wanted to pull back from the bed as though they were moving vertically. Right. But they didn't have the technology, even the camera rigs, to do right. it back then. So, you so had to. they built a room completely flipped at a 90 degree angle on its side so they could set up a crane and just pull back, pull straight back. And then when you saw it on screen, it looked like they were. Right. You know, lifting up for me. And you passed out because it's the crucifix position. It and, was. And I was, uh, you know, those mm -hmm. tongues were uh, made of latex, but they had metal brackets on them oh. right. that were digging into my wrist. And and I was probably suspended about 25 feet in the air. Right. And, uh, it, you know, movie sets are notoriously overheated. Sure. Uh, so it was probably about, you know, 90 degrees right. on set. And uh, and you know that's when they, so when you when you wake up what, what, what do you think you're like what, you know enough well, of that I'm you know I fainted once right you know and they they pulled me down and then you know realized or did they have that, Lawrence Fishburne and Robert Anglin go uh, that's <laughs> when you were t I gotta say I gotta say when probably the most amazing moment uh, yeah. for me on on the set of Nightmare on Elm Street yeah was. When I walked onto set and I saw Cool from Apocalypse Now, yeah. Lawrence Fishburne, I was a young movie fan, and I was such a fan of that movie. Yeah. And See, that's was, the guy I would have asked how to get Patricia Arquette, not and, Robert Englund. <laughs> and I really don't think that... I mean, you're the researcher that yes. I haven't checked, but I don't think he had even done a movie since Apocalypse Now. And well, when I have Lawrence Fishburne in here, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll scour his right. IMDb page. But yeah, I was just so amazed. And yeah. uh, he was incredible. But you could, you could tell, like, this dude knows what he's doing. Well, yeah, I knew he knew what he was yeah. doing. I'd, you know, I'd watched, I'd, I'd watched Apocalypse Now at least ten times right. by that time. You right. Know, came out in, what, 79? You know. So how did you meet John? And and I, I'm sorry that we keep like we're talking to Rodney. I'm ignoring yeah, why not? No, Academy no, Award nominee John Hawks here. Father, no, how did you guys meet? Join. Uh, oh, uh, Rodney and I met uh, playing half brothers on a movie called that's, Sand. That's not how we met. How did you meet? Rodney? No, we met. You're right, Rodney. We met earlier than that, I guess. We met, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we first met on a TV show. Dangerous Minds. Dangerous Minds. We had scenes together, but we met at the read through. So this right. was this, was this a spin off of the Michelle Pfeiffer movie? It was. Okay. It was. Uh, okay, I remember. TV they series for that. a couple of years. It was on, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I I don't think we met at the table read. I think we met. I remember just seeing you. But yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was out of it back yep, then. Yep. But so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and then what we crossed paths on set. Uh, did we? I believe so. Just said hello, maybe? Yeah. No, we had no scenes together. Right. But we were on the same TV show. Exactly. That's where we first met. And then... We started auditioning for that movie, Sand, out in Malibu. That's right. And uh, that's when I At first kind of really remember to talking to you. I didn't realize that. Yeah. And uh, I remember sitting out in the parking lot and just being amazed at uh, how old you said you were, because I thought you were probably younger. Mm -hmm. And um, then we chatted a while and smoked a couple of cigs and hope said uh, you know we'd auditioned with a bunch of other people and in all kinds of different uh, groups and I remember just thinking I hope uh, we said uh, you know hope hope you get it hope you get it and we both got it and then we were joined at the hip for that movie and uh, then did like a couple things like randomly again partnered up just like we did Nash Bridges television show yeah. within a year later and so I feel like something else with, so with, we within, just kept working within eight, 18 months we were on uh, the, those three jobs that's right within together. a year and a half which is crazy and then uh uh, you like music. I like music. You know, I like music. Yeah, That's I make music. I make music. And so uh, Rodney played me a demo of a song of his that was really great, and he played all the instruments on it. He played it in the makeup trailer. I thought it was really good, and wanted to collaborate with him. And so we got together and started playing music. We played a house party together. That was a gig of mine that he joined me on. And then I guess in nineteen or two thousand three, we started to really record and and make a band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and why is the Rodney and John band, not the John and Rodney band? Uh, it just sounds better yeah. for one. Da, da, oh, it da, sounds da. better, Rodney. Sure. Da, 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 da. <laughs> just rhythmically, rhythmically. No. Oh, okay. Da, oh, da, got da, it. Da, da, da. Instead of da 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 da. Not as interesting to me. 
and and yeah, we had a band uh, uh, called uh, King Straggler. King Straggler, I was just and to um, and and that band ended, and uh, we didn't play music probably for five years together. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, that, and that band we'd been in was intense. You know, we played Sundance, we played South by Southwest, mm-hmm. we toured a couple of times. We had labels two sniff, U.S. Sniff, tours, sniffing, up, yeah. sniffing us up uh, during that, and it was an intense experience. And then we mm-hmm. we didn't play for a while. Yeah, yeah. and because uh, um, you're busy working actors. Yeah, partly yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, just just life. Yeah, just I I I mean John and I have been yeah. uh, we did the uh, yeah you want you want to you want to come over and uh, write some songs? No, I'm going to the Oscars. I'll be. Uh, <laughs> it, it's not so much that it's uh, I'm it's, kidding, I'm it, kidding. it's like uh, any any friendship. I mean, we joke on stage. Uh, yeah. w- you know, we do introductions and. Uh, well, that's what know. I was going to say when I saw you guys. Frank Zappa famously said, "Does humor belong in music?" Mm. And it definitely does with with your music. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of a lot of, a lot of satir- it's, you haven't heard him sing, it, and you will shortly. It's it's almost been an hour. I can't even believe it. But uh, wow. uh, the conversation. Uh, but uh, a terrific band. And we're going to hear uh, uh, one or maybe two songs, whatever you guys want to do. Three, four, five, whatever you want to do. Two. Two, <laughs> two yeah. songs. Yeah. Two. two songs. But I, 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 I really enjoyed. Beca- and here's the thing. Now, you both kind of came up, in, uh, from what I understand, what I've read, kind of in the punk era, inspired by punk. But your music is more a country folk sort of thing, right? Maybe. I mean, uh, King Striker used to be more in the country folk, and we'll still pull that out. It's just music, really, I think. And uh, Rodney, I feel like, if, if, I'm not, if I'm not incorrect, was more metal when you were a kid growing up. Right. When he was a right. young teenager and stuff like that. And Classic rock. And, yeah. You know. Yeah, and I liked you, classic rock and then kind right. of discovered punk rock in 1979 when I was living right. in Austin, Texas, and started playing in bands in 1982. And so was you know early on into it but uh, i think it's less about punk was never about a mohawk or a distorted guitar or being loud it, it was always to me more of a of a of a of people who had no money which right. none of us did who were um, who really cared deeply about what they were doing and with the resources they had they were going to do their best and not fuck people over and not right. you know and be just decent to those around them and doesn't sound like punk but that's what it was to me sure so any kind of music it didn't have to be a certain kind of music it felt punk rock to me from philip glass to the roaches to sure. whoever felt felt like punk rock because they were doing things that were so different from what you'd hear on popular radio right. so um yeah i i loved as as rodney has uh we've exposed each other to, to a lot of good music over the years i just always had music in my in my in my brain and wanted to play music even though I was too shy to and I think Rodney's the same. Yeah, and you were paying attention because 40 minutes ago he was saying all the bands they like and they're all metal bands. So mm-hmm. I didn't even. <laughs> and <laughs> and but I mean I've always liked all kinds of music and sure. and and I think that uh, you know like I said with, that we took a real break uh, from uh, playing music right. and uh, and maybe at that point in time we kind of. Uh, drifted apart even as friends mm-hmm. but uh john and i've known each other 21 more 20, 22, 22 years yeah, and like it's like uh marriage it's like any relationship sure uh, nothing is all uh ice cream and cotton candy right. all the way through right you know and and i feel like our uh, triumphs together as friends our uh, closeness that mm-hmm. we've achieved and also uh times in life when we hated each other mm-hmm. has uh made our uh friendship and our music all the more richer i right. really i really think that and 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 i would say uh you know aside from uh heavy metal uh, also very influenced by uh velvet underground lou sure. reed yeah. david bowie and i think even in the stuff that we did that was more sort of country flavored you could still hear those influences in it and i feel like they've come out a little bit more L- now yeah. and and lou reed especially yes and and uh, and I, like we like to say, uh, you know, now uh, this this band is more art band than jug band. Sure. You know, mm. and uh, and speaking of which, we have a show coming up. Yes, you next do. week. I have the flyer right here. There you go. That's uh, it's going to be comedy. Or is it two shows? We have two, two shows. Two shows coming up. Okay, so, so we've got the uh, the show on next Thursday, which is your birthday show. It is my birthday. And show. And we're going to have comedy, and then Rodney and John. That's at the Five Star Bar downtown. That is. That is on the 18th. Is that correct? The 18th. Oh, and, good. Today. I'll be there. And yeah. And also, <laughs> I'm Mark, actually going to come right after the show too. Yeah. And also, Mark, you you have only seen John and I perform as a 
as a duo with our amazing uh, violin player, uh, uh, Corey Simeone. Who's great, yeah. Uh, but and this show is Lerman. is going to be our our real uh, rock show with the full band with the, our incredible uh, drummer Danny Thompson who has uh, played with us. To lucky him, many years. But uh, <laughs> but he was also uh, you know again rest in peace. He was mm-hmm. uh, um, um, Scott Weiland. Scott Weiland's oh, okay. uh, drummer right up until oh wow kind uh, of he the was day a he died. Then. And you, yeah. he sure is. And uh, and now he's on the road with um, Alan Parsons. Alan project. Parsons. Yeah. Well, that's, that's not too shabby. Nope. And uh, and Mike Lerman, our incredible bass player, and uh, Corey Simeone. So they'll all be joining us, and you're going to see a much sort of different uh, real yeah. rock show. This is yeah, this be is a rock show. Rodney and John go electric. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I can't. I can't wait. This is going to be great. Uh, and uh, John, because uh, man, we're at like 64 minutes. I got two questions to ask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I want to hear some music. Why do all actors want to be musicians? Eddie Murphy, Billy Bob Thornton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can name uh, just uh, you know, uh, uh, Jared Leto. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zoe Deschanel. I mean, just uh, Taylor Momsen. What What is it about the uh, actors that they they and you guys are good? I mean, and and, and actually, you know, I'm trying to think of, of an actor that's really not that good. Yeah, well, Spin Magazine a few summers back, uh, maybe ten years ago now, did a did an actor band um, uh, expose, yeah. and uh, we were luckily highly rated throughout uh, the article because they were mean to people, and I understand. <laughs> I understand. Um, it's like how much attention do you need? I think people uh, may <laughs> say, but for me, uh, music's never been about money. Acting hasn't really been either. They just started to pay me at some point uh, for doing the same thing I've been doing for ten years for free. But uh, I think that it's all telling a story on some level, and right. I think that if you're attracted to telling stories or hearing stories, you're going to be attracted to a lot of different things. Sure. Uh, so. To me, it all goes together, and and a lot of art has the same kind of rules. It's just as far as what I personally enjoy. So, yeah. you know, uh, if I walk into an art museum, I, wa- I walk out a better actor. If I go see a dance performance, I walk out a better right. actor. If I read a novel, I end up a better musician. If I write a song, I end up whatever. You know, all, I think they all kind of uh, literally go together. But the funny thing to me is it's pretty cool. No one had any issue when... Uh, musicians want to act. That's no right. problem. That's well, no problem. But if if an actor wants seen, if an actor it? wants to play music, it's yeah. it's as though you've uh, yeah you're like a like a like a common thief or a murderer or something. You know, yeah. somebody you're you're you're, you're an anathema. It used to be that way. Nobody yeah. kind of cares anymore because everybody's got their own show and whatever. Yeah. Uh, but but I yeah, know. I've seen Fifty Cent act. Uh, I I just saw I saw the, just saw Iggy Pop play a zombie. Yeah, but nobody's gonna go. <laughs> no one's going to go way out of their way and harass the force. Yeah. What I'm saying, whereas yeah. you know, f- ten fifteen years ago, as an, if an actor wanted to play yeah. music, it was thought of as. But I've been playing music since nineteen in band since eighty two. Right. And the first exposure I ever got uh, outside of the region I was in for any art was for a band I was in called Meat Joy in 1982 written up in England so you know long before I was ever getting in the press if you will as an actor I was there as a musician so. All right. well, yeah. there you go uh, and, and the, I, I was playing uh, the backyard parties in East LA when I was 16 years old playing drums well, yeah playing drums way before I ever you know Decided to even try to be an actor. Well, that's great. Well, that and 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 also, I just got to say, uh, sorry to be a you know a, a plug whore, but uh, you know, uh, I have not been as active as I should be mm-hmm. in my acting career because I'm really trying to move up the financial uh, entertainment ladder. You yeah, know, I started as an actor, and then I went to the far more lucrative. Uh, musician route and now I've jumped right to the top in the uh, stand up comedy world. Right. <laughs> Everyone knows the you, immense riches that yeah, are you really, there yeah. for the taking. By the way, the and next it, step is janitor, by the way. No, just so you know. Well then and below that's poetry. <laughs> yeah. I think really if you were you know, well, as that's, far as, that's far as next, money as far as money next, making. Yes. That's next for me, yeah, John. Right. Yeah. I can only, the, one the can only money. one can only dream. Yes. Big money is always in poetry. But I I saw you do some stand up and you were inexperienced, but you were funny. 
And that's more than I can say for a lot of people. Thank you. I think Thank that you. comes with comedians, too. With age, you kind of have a sense of humor about life and what you lived mm. through. Which is interesting so. because a lot of the clubs won't book anybody over 30. Yeah. But, uh, just, wait, uh, which is ridiculous. Just, you know? we've, we've got no, more hyping. Go ahead. I, no, no, I have to hype. But making ahead. a joke about it. Uh, but uh, I'm not. I, I have not. been, I have been uh, uh, you know, uh, building uh, a the comedy fact. show mm-hmm. at Five Star Bar. Uh, with my girlfriend Angela Manzan, who we've had on the show, who's terrific, right? And you are a regular there, and I, I you're very I funny. Now. You hosted our last show, Mark, right? And yeah. it, I have to say, uh, it, making a joke about the, the financial gains, they are not there, but it's been one of the most gratifying experiences that I've had in show business. It's been uh, well, the Five it, Star Bars is a great venue. It's they're getting more and more people. Uh, on on the 14th, next Thursday... 18th. 18th, excuse me. J.R. Redwater, who we've had on the show, is going to be on. He's great. Uh, we got uh, Jackson Banks, who we got to have on the show. He's fantastic. Very incredible. Very incredible. Incredible. Brooklyn Jones. Incredible. Troy One Delager. of our best amazing. lineups amazing. ever. Yeah. It's terrific. I'm even going to come in and, and uh, hopefully do a set. And well, I have to say two things. You are, you are going to be on the show. And, and, uh, and, and John, when you were there, you were there supporting all the comedians. You even moved the pool table. You're just... I did what I can, man. Yeah. But we, uh, but I know we're out of time, so we'll talk. Just we'll just do everything faster. Yes. Uh, uh, we're also playing the twentieth at Fado Do. Uh, oh wow! Okay, uh, yeah. Indeed, uh, in the evening. Uh, how do they find us, Rodney? Is it Rodney and John on, Ro- at Facebook? Rodney and John with the Facebook? ampersand, uh, no, no, rather no, than A N D. They won't let you use an ampersand in the <laughs> title. <laughs> but but it, on, Rodney and John on but Facebook. You're, but you're on you're on Instagram <laughs> at, at Rodney and John. Right, right. Uh, Rodney and John, also uh, just Rodney Eastman, right on Facebook. Sure. Uh, on also on Facebook, if you wanna uh, for the upcoming comedy shows, uh, Smarties and Dummies. Smarties and Dummies on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's uh, Rodney and John right. on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, we've got a lot of good stuff coming up. Do you want to tell them? That about was one thing. The, play? the second Don't thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real quickly, um, Rodney and I. Most important. Rodney and I and a gentleman named Whammo, uh, out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The three of us uh, wrote uh, a rock and roll play called Where's Cherry, and we did a couple of uh, workshops of it over the last year, and we're hoping uh, this fall to really mount Where's Cherry. In earnest, so uh, Rodney give it, was give it, a, about that, give it yeah. a full production. Mm-hmm. So keep an eye out for Where's Cherry, and when you hear these songs, we'll play one from a record we got coming up, and the other song that Rodney will sing will be from the show Where's Cherry. That's great. Cool. Uh, first yeah. off, for, uh, and please come back and bring Whammo. I got to meet that. I got to meet a guy named Whammo. You and Whammo absolutely. are, are yeah. actually uh, <laughs> you may cancel <laughs> each other out. Yeah. It's one of those things yeah. where two right. people have the same kind of intensity. Energy, it's yeah, like yeah. you know, it's like Bukowski never wanted to go to a party where there's another drunken writer. So right. we'll <laughs> cancel each other out. No one will even know anyone's there. And, and one, one, one last question, because I, I don't know the next time we'll have an Oscar nominee in here. No, but we'll come back for Where's Cherry. Hopefully. No, no, Red, I, I, absolutely. Hopefully in October. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but uh, what was in the, what was in the gift bag? Uh, which one? The Academy gift bag? Yeah. I had no idea. You know, I gave that stuff away, or, you know, it wasn't a car in the bag. There was no car. <laughs> but I looked all over, but there was no car in the bag. The, one thing that you do get as an Academy Award nominee, and this is no bullshit, you get... a. Uh, Really large, cheaply made gray sweatshirt that's like extra, extra large, and it says Academy Award nominee on it. No, you, are you serious? <laughs> no, they've been doing this for many years, apparently. I'm not sure. Whoever makes the sweatshirt, I apologize for poking fun at it, but I don't know where that is either. But uh, I, I, apparently, they I haven't worn it out to clubs. <laughs> I, I think pajamas, I, though. It's like cozy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they gave, you, they gave you Peter Ustinov's old uh, sweatshirt. I, I don't know. They have. I don't know, but everyone gets the same size. They don't They're even nice. ask what size the you want. The bigger, the better. Yeah, yeah. If, if he could find it, maybe he'll give it to you, Mark. Could be. I, 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 yeah. I would I would be honored. But anyway, I I would I can't wait to hear these songs. By the way, Hannah, yeah. you know we were goofing on the actors making music. These guys are good. Wait till you hear this. Well, and we're, we're actors making music. We'll see what goes. I, I've heard you guys are good. And uh, anyway, we're gonna have Rodney and John sing. Let's just play it for a minute. Let's yeah, let's happens. just play. Let's just see what happens. What count count is it? Oh, okay. One. There 
is no history. There is no mystery. There is no innocence. That last one's called Wild Land. Wild Land. Two words if you want together in either one. And this one's called No Place. No Place. Did you eat 
something today You look awful tired And I heard you lost your way Spread your wings, it's done You flew on This ain't no place for a woman Cause the men who lie wait with hungry eyes At the bottom of your stair But I promise I'll chase them off when I get there Father, forgive us, we overlook the price, rules of engagement, left us all as cool as ice, so let's have a drink and take cover. the show I guess we'll never know if we're ready for all of this it's an easy thought for most to dismiss for we're laid to rest here our last request love thy brothers and sisters too Words and all. Yeah, words and all. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice work, Ron. Thank you, guys.